And like right now. Right now? Yep. We're live right now. Like right now, right now. Like right now. Get out of town. No. no for real. I cannot get out of town. Like, oh. <laughs> no, I can't do it. You can do it? No, wait. we're trying to do uh, uh, Achiel. Achiel. Uh, Serge. Serge. No, it's Serge. Serge. Serge? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still I'm still tweeting it. <laughs> I'm so slow at tweeting. I'm a sloter. A tweet. What is a slow What is a slow tweeter? A twoter? I guess. <laughs> Maybe that's something that you eat, a twoter or twatter. Ooh. it up. I twat that. <laughs> I think it, yeah, it was meant for quick release of information. Yeah, so I right, guess I'm yeah, doing it yeah, wrong then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there's nothing quick about a Samoan, I'll tell you that. <laughs> there's once in a while you get a Troy Polamalu, but the rest of them not so quick. Well maybe the rock is kinda quick. He's Hercules. Yeah. 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 Well, that's more like <clears throat> strong and and massive. One and of the god, like the half god, right? Oh, yeah. Is it demigod or what do you call that? What do you, half god? god? Yeah, demigod. Yeah. Demigod. Uh, that's the, uh, mulatto uh, god. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, he is mulatto. <laughs> well, actually, no. okay, so is mulatto half black, half white, or half mm -hmm. black, half anything else? I thought it was half black, half white. That's what I thought. Yeah, like Dark yeah. Jeter and Mariah Carey, like. Mulatto. Yeah. Or is that something you order at uh, Starbucks? You do. You they do have a mulatto. No, it's don't. one of the cheaper things on the menu. I thought it was a, a macchiato. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's what the rock is. <laughs> the rock uh, is half a macchiato, <laughs> mulatto. No, he's a caramel <laughs> macchiato. Uh, mulatto is part black and part white, per uh, the Urban Dictionary no, and Wikipedia. So, what would a Samoan and black be? Uh, was it mulatto? Super athletic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know some half black, half Samoan guys that are not athletic at all. It's like they got the the bad parts of uh, of the gene pool, like like Danny DeVito of twins or something. <laughs> they do exist, you know. There's not every uh, black or Samoan person is, you know, what the stereotypical black or Samoan person is, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, I would say that's true. Like you're breaking the stereotype, like a white dude with a big penis. It yeah. Happens. <laughs> yeah. I know some black guys who can't run fast. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot of them are in Hawaii. Believe it or not, because I mean, okay, all right, all right. It's it's going there. I'm sorry, but every time you know in, in high school, you know, we we get a, a there's there wasn't that many um, black people in my high school when we when, when my freshman year. But as you know, more people kept moving to the islands. More, you know, you get more. You guys are looking at me and making me feel really bad right now. <laughs> Anyways, wait for what's going, you know, what's about to happen. When we got some on the team, we were thinking, you know, stereotypical, you know, oh, now we're going to have some speed on our team. <laughs> yeah. Is that what happened? That you really <laughs> thought that? <We're> gonna... <laughs> yeah, because most most of the kids in our area are, you know, Japanese or, or you know, there's some local. There's locals there, but most of them are Japanese, like Pro City. Was it, was it, was it like the, the skinny kind or was it like the 6'4", 340 black guys? Oh, and, and you, you still were like, we got some speed now. <laughs> but like scientifically, though, yeah, they are the genetically mic. made to be faster. Like because their Achilles tendon is longer and their calf sits higher up on their leg. That I mean, there's or, other things that sit higher up on the leg, but would that make you slower? The what? What? No, because they run with three legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, and their knee grows. <laughs> I, that's what I was told, man. By, that's uh, messed up. I'm sorry. A, uh, I apologize. Sports medicine. Sports medicine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Longer Achilles tendon. You can jump higher, run faster. Oh, yeah. They I have, don't know. I think because they have the, 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 mus the type of muscle. muscle. <laughs> and Popeye all of a sudden. <laughs> 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 kind of, <laughs> I am what I am because they're, they have the, the twitch. The, the, uh, the fast twitch. Yeah, fiber. fast twitch yeah. muscles. Whereas, but you can develop all that if you work out. Yeah, you get, the those, right you get those shoes that, that are that platforms in the front or something and – <laughs> the uh, the jumps jump soles. Yeah, back jumps in the days yeah. that George Costanza was selling for Jimmy Seinfeld episode. You uh. kids don't know what I'm talking about. Dude, I just got fast because I owned a uh, a Detroit Lions starter jacket in the in the early '90s, <laughs> and I was about 100 pounds. So and, you were and, Barry Sanders. Yeah, I had to be to, to to keep that jacket for as long as I had. You know, what I mean? like <laughs> it was that in the uh, Miami Hurricanes. That was the one you wanted. Oh, the U. Yeah, yeah. that was badass. 
But if you if you wore the U jacket and you were not badass, (laughs) that is not a good thing. You You better be. You better represent, or else you faking the funk, as they would say back in the days. Let me get this tweet out because I still I'm still only on to. You guys talk to each other for about two seconds while I finish typing this. How about while the the tweet goes out? What? Do I press this button now? Or? Sure, go ahead. Well, no, not yet. Well, we don't press buttons yet. What is that button for? No, you'll find out when we press oh, the God. button. All right, press the button. What? Huh? Really? Yeah. yeah, let's go for it. All right. Pressing the button. <laughs> button push. <laughs> Podcasting live. The Guys With Issues at Hawaiian Brian's. Starring James Money, Russell Kilwa, and Chad Wago. Come to my house, babe. Prove me wrong. Tell me that I'm fronting just for playing alone. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Martians and Venetians. I still haven't figured that out. Venufians. Or are they just women? Because they say women are from Mars or Venus, right? Yeah. So would they be Venetians? Yeah. So women... Like blinds? Yeah. Well, women do try to blind your view. Whoa! Hey! That was whack. Was that With right? their curtains. Yeah. Hey-o. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode 80 of the Guys With Issues. We are at the studio in Hawaiian Bryant. Yes, we are. The lovely studio. We've got a nice setup here. We got the, we're like right at the stage, basically. Uh, as always, I am with Russell Kealoha. Hello, bitches. Yes, greetings to bitches all, of, all around. I almost said all abound. Is that, what does that Same mean? Same thing. Is it, does it? Yeah. The bitches abound. Yeah. Or all abound the bitches. Bound. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right, and uh, we're still waiting on Chad Wago to get here, but we have our special guest in the house. Everybody's like, "What? She's there now? No, she's not. She's not here yet. She will be here though. Uh, I won't say her name until she gets here. But right now, we have our uh, what I consider a special guest. Yes, he's special to me. Yes, you know, not only is he good looking, I would, I, you know, I wouldn't doubt if in the Thank future I'd you. see him in a porn. <laughs> That was the plan originally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, so. ladies and gentlemen, Clint Balsley. Well, thank you very much, James. No. I like to uh, throw shouts out to the, the bitches and the male dogs as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we love dogs. Uh, I'm uh, here to capture equal. the Caucasian crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See that, Russell, he, he wants to you know appreciate all types of dogs. Russell, just the female dogs. Yeah. I mm-hmm. don't know why that is, but that's how he rolls. I'm a hater. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first, let's start off, I want to say... Um, Happy Prince mm-hmm. Kuhio Day. Yes, it oh. is. Those that don't know, it is a state holiday here in the mm. islands uh, of Hawaii. Uh, I keep looking at Russell when I say something Hawaiian because Russell is the Hawaiian in the group. I, Mr. Kealoha here. Uh, so uh, doing a little bit of research, Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole Piikoi was the prince of the reigning house of Kalakaua when the kingdom of Hawaii was overthrown by international businessmen in 1893. Now that we have a white guy in the house, uh, (laughs) how do you feel thief and murderer? I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I was like, I, you know, I understand that in my lineage, there might have been some jerks in the family, but I am born now and here, and I do. I wouldn't have done that if I came to Hawaii and so there was monarchy. I wouldn't have done that. I mean, like, but still, land having sex with their women is that a terrible idea? Like, like, <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and they got good hospitals here now, so it is okay. Like I, I read this book. Uh, it was um, what was his name? Mark Twain, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. he the Sandwich Island book, and he talked about when Captain Cook came here. He told his best lieutenant. All right, you guys, you take the small boat, you go to the island, but don't touch anything. And when he came back and reported to him, he was like, sadly, they were too beautiful. I could not, you know. And so he, it was just, it was just too much for us in our white flesh, 
You know what I mean? On our lusty white mayonnaise bodies. <laughs> we just had to goddamn do it. Did they have mayonnaise back then? No, or the it was mayonnaise sandwich. face. Mayonnaise face. Oh, okay. Mayonnaise face, yeah. Well, they did the make the sandwich island, so you need mayonnaise for sandwiches. True, so. but I, the, the, the brown skin with the smell of coconut oil, it's, it's you know. Mm-hmm. It's did they have coconut oil back then? They or? did, because yeah, they had man. coconuts. Huh? <laughs> so. Then they brought their mayonnaise. <laughs> mayonnaise. <laughs> so that, that's what did it. So if you're, 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 you're hanging out, you're having some coconut, eating the coconut meat, drinking the coconut juice, rubbing coconut oil on you, mm-hmm. mm. what'll mess that up is a. Uh, a spoonful of mayonnaise. The yeah. fats of mayonnaise is never sexy. Damn. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, see, one of my girlfriends used to use mayonnaise in her hair. It's a okay. Yeah. Thing. She's a Rasta, really? Rastafarian. No, no, no. It's okay. It's to like add, uh, make it fuller, or add something to it. Well, mayonnaise. If you want to twist up the dreadlocks, some people put mayonnaise in there. Already, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, all I remember is like beeswax or something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That too. But yeah, you put mayonnaise to it. Uh, anyways, you know, and she, because she was a hot woman, you know, and we did some things while she had that in her hair, and maybe her hair, you know, fell into my mouth when she was on top, and I was like, mayonnaise, mayonnaise. <laughs> yummy. Dude, what how is? how women can get away with anything though? Like as long as they're like banging you good, <laughs> dude, you're like, oh, that must be normal. I yeah, don't know. It must be adorable. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> women can do no wrong. I mean, all they gotta do is just like just start slipping off a shirt or their top. And all of a sudden, it's like, what were we arguing about? <laughs> <laughs> you win. I'm sorry. Uh, that's that's my problem. See, that's why we we had an episode where uh, we talked about if if you ever had the last word. Mm. And I obviously never had the last word in any of my relationships because I always I'm the type to always apologize. I don't know about you. How about you? Um. You- yeah. No. Like. I'm pretty good at arguing, you know what I mean, and I like to be heard. So uh, there's been a couple different times where I've I've definitely got the last word. Um, I had one of my ex girlfriends; she she cheated on me, so I got her in the car, and uh, I found the the pregnancy slip and actually dropped it in the car on her. Like, hey, look, I know what's going on. We're done. Last word. Like, she tried to say something. I was like, no, no, yeah, not gonna happen. So, oh. anyways, yeah. Mayonnaise. <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, people from Venus are called Venetians. That is Venetians? the proper... Like yes. the blinds. Yes, that's uh, the proper nomenclature for oh. them. You have a good radio voice. Thank you very much. Thank I've you. heard that before. You yeah? have? Yes. But you never ran with it, huh? No, I tried out for the uh, National School of Broadcasting up in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, yeah? Well, yeah, once I graduated from high school. and um, I didn't follow through with that venture. No. Yeah. Hmm. I wanted to uh, screw up my, my life with drugs and alcohol for a couple of years oh, yeah? before I yeah, actually <laughs> decided what I wanted to do. Oh, my. So. Chad's been asking me what this thing is. And I don't mean to derail it. It's, if yeah, you guys don't know, James has disappeared. Yeah, he dipped out. He actually dipped out because of the le- there's a legend outside. <laughs> oh, my God. There is a legend. There is a legend outside. She's coming inside. I know. I mean, not really Dude, coming f- into I'm but entering out. the I'm freaking out, studio. man. You, you are? Yeah. Stay still, stay calm. It's all good. Yeah. What, should so I just act like you've been there right? before? Act like you've been there before. Okay. I've been, yeah. I've been on the couch before. You've been on the couch. I've before? spoken to a microphone before, and I've also used headphones. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Take it easy. Oh God, I'm sweating so bad. Yeah. 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 Like my yeah, profusely. Here you go. You She's right there. She's right there next She's, to you. Yeah. You lucky bitch. I know. You want to switch spots? No, I'm good. No, you good? I have to run everything over here. Oh, okay. You're doing that? Um, yeah, Chad, you better hurry up, Chad. Chad's not here yet, but he better hurry up. Miss out. It's gonna be guys with issues with uh, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> Just with Clint today. All right. Sorry about I... the delay of the show. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> All right, I'm back. <laughs> this guy's sweat. I'm gonna have to change the way I sit, like this. I am back. Right. I Why are you get, back? Because I had to get our special, our special, special guest. We have our special guest, and then we have our super special, way better than our special guest. Guest. <laughs> oh, is your mic? Is your mic on? Uh, there we go. Let me. Yes. Special guest. Dude, I touched your mic. Assisted the super special guest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah once, I, once I knew about the special guest, I was like, You're I just feel kind of like a normal person now. <laughs> like definitely. Like a wheat toast, no butter, no. like boring as hell. Well, let me introduce our our very special <laughs> guest. It's more important than that guest over there. Yeah. Wait, but what is the name of that guest? So uh, I know. Okay, that's that's Clint. That's Clint. just Clint. I'm okay. just Clint. That's Clint. <laughs> that's Russell. I'm James. Hi. Our very special guest has just arrived. 
super special guest, Miss Tara Patrick. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> wow. First of all, you actually, I mean, I never know how to compliment a woman because I don't <laughs> okay. want Okay, let be careful. No, yes, it's always loaded, I've you know. Heard it all. You look a lot more beautiful <laughs> today than you did when you were here last. Although you did look beautiful the last time we saw you. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. You know, it's loaded. It's, no, it's okay. I know what you mean. But I was going to say the first time I did the show, we're in a different place now. Yes. This yes. is a different studio. Yes. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. You guys are super special now. You're in a in a much bigger place. Because you're, you're here. here. Oh. <laughs> so this is like a this is All just a stops. ninja spot. We only recorded here because you know, no, you know. make us special oh. because you're here. <laughs> but no, it was also the morning. I did your morning. No, it was it was in a, it was in the evening it just was? before you went to perform. It was, it was at uh, it was the morning. It was at Club Nine Three Nine, Boys oh, okay. Premier Gentlemen's Club. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Maybe you, it was the morning for me because it was you were just I was doing a show at night. Three three days in a row, of just straight partying nonstop. <laughs> that, that must have been no. I think I flew in. That might have been what it was. See, that's <laughs> so the, that's the like fantasy for me. To like, dude, she's so Tara Patrick's so wild. She stays up for like three four days in a row. I used to, but she's, not anymore. It gets harder, you know. After a long time, it, it gets harder to party like that. But I mean, I work and travel so much. So usually the day I fly in, I was just having this conversation. I have a ton of energy and it's great. And mm -hmm. like last night, I was up late and I was all over Waikiki. And then to Today is it going to be mellow, and tomorrow, forget it. Like I'm going to be exhausted. You, you just know? be at the pool, or you're going to be <laughs> at the be beach. I'll be at the pool. I'll be at the pool, and I'll probably just shop or something. But then, yeah, it's true. It's weird when I do perform and do burlesque shows or strip club shows mm -hmm. at night. All my energies <clears throat> at night, like during the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you just you don't turn that switch on until nighttime. it's time to perform. And I'm yeah. usually not a night person. I'm usually a morning person. But really? when it comes to working and traveling, your fantasy will come true. I'll just I'll do the splits over your head. Oh my I'll, God. I'll, I'll like <laughs> I'll twirl and swirl. Okay, and too bad we're not in a, a visual pot or video podcast because she I turned know. to Clint and Clint was like, Oh my gosh, she's looking right at me. I, I never thought that was gonna happen in my whole entire life. <laughs> Well, actually, what, what, week, what's yeah. going on tonight uh, for Clint, this is going to be his last performance in Hawaii. He's a, he oh. was living here. He, he's, he was in the military. He just recently got out. Um, he is going to be moving back to the mainland, so we have his last show tonight. Oh, okay, stand-up show? Uh, yeah. Stand okay, up. and this is a stand-up theater, I guess. You were showing well, us the theater, right? Yeah, well, we do stand-up, and they have a lot of rock, uh, rock shows here. Oh, okay. So there's a, uh, a lot of different type of live, live performances. Well, every Wednesday night, we do our um, stand-up comedy shows here in this room, okay. uh, Mars Comedy Club, we call it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're saying goodbye. You're yeah, leaving. Yeah, pretty much to the oh. comedy scene in Hawaii. Yeah. So he's going to continue. Dude, what a way to go out, too, man. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. Look, hey, Tara yeah. Patrick. Yeah, and Tara Patrick. Do you Thank see you. what the guys with issues can yeah. do for you? I know. Well, it's funny. I never knew. It's funny because I actually, um, I was on a on a traveling stand-up comedy tour all last year. And it's hard. I mean, I will say, I, I think stand-up comedians mm -hmm. and porn people or stars or actors whatever you want to call us we have a lot in common it's very hard literally to get uh Sorry. reactions out of people like you could be crushing it you right. could be up there and people are just sitting there you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. staring at you and you're giving them everything and that's kind of how performing is like you know you're like all right you know where's this going here but um i, I noticed that when i did stand up it, it was i could really see i'm like wow i am working my ass off literally like this is hard i just want to go back to being hot so you actually <laughs> like it's so much easier it's so much easier so i guess my point to all that because i'm ranting is i have a lot of respect for for people who come up you know with their own material and you, mm -hmm. it's so you're brave you're very brave we're very brave people i think I, even though i stand up on stage and get naked that's a lot of people's nightmare your nightmare is being up there and you're just crushing it and people well, because you have you. the talents physically and well and you guys do too though that's what i'm saying you're delivering a lot of material and right. not everybody's giving you kind of you know what you're what you're worth i mean you're really being a comedian i there's a lot of pain there i mean i, I remember yeah, being on this is. tour and seeing some comedians and going i think this is therapy is this a tour you, you, you <laughs> went with is it margaret tro or um well, actually she wrote the foreword to my book um oh. sinner takes all yeah which i'm gonna uh, be selling tonight at club 939 but oh. no it was uh, death squad um the naughty show they called it so mm. it was just a, a touring, a lot of different comedians like Jeffrey Ross, Sam Tripoli, 
um, oh, wow. just all different comedians, <clears throat> but from all from all different backgrounds mm. and, and stuff. I mean, as you you know, you travel. Well, I'm sure you work with different comedians all the time. Some of them are more. Ooh, I just got offered some cola. I can't. Uh, <laughs> see, now we're gonna get really jacked up. We're gonna do more than the splits <laughs> right. over your head. Thank so, you. so what, what is uh, comedy yoga? What is that? Uh, is that something? Oh, we seen that on your blog, comedy yoga. Because we read your blog. Oh my goodness! See, all right. <laughs> let, me, let me take a sip of this now. Let's get some caffeine right. and. Then. Okay, no, no, no. I'm sorry. So you're, um, I, I did a bunch of funny or die skits, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just basically playing a yoga teacher who comes in after staying up and partying, Clint, for three and four nights, and I'm just trying to teach yoga, you know, while I'm really messed up, fucked up, and it's just different skits. I mean, you watch Funny or Die. It's just. Mm-hmm. Okay, Being so funny. we definitely got to put that in uh, yeah, on the site. Yeah, my attempt at just trying to do, you know, I guess some comedy. I'm sure it went by, it went awesome. It's fun. I I get what you, I I mean I get why it's it's a rush. I'm sure for you, you know. Yeah, and like I don't know, like what I was gonna say, like I. I think what you said about us, like kind of being in the same, like you open yourself up, you yeah. know what I mean? So you're open to the criticism and stuff like that or, and try not to be sensitive to, you know, what people have to say. Right. Their opinion. And then it's like subjective too. Like, um, to me, I think you're the most beautiful woman in the whole entire world, <laughs> but some people like blondes, you know, and that's their right. thing. Like, like, um, and then some people like racist jokes, some people like, you yeah. know, like stuff they can relate to or storytelling and stuff. So it's all subjective. Like mm-hmm. you could be doing it like your best. And it's just like not what gets them off or whatever. It's not their deal. That's it's so, exactly. That's yeah. a good point. Like it doesn't get them off. And that's what's funny because I personally, I like when I think back to the first type of comedy I was introduced to Red Fox, George Carlin. Classics. I, yes. Mm. And I also my dad's British. So I grew up on Monty Python, which I didn't really appreciate till later in life. Right. right I, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, Cheech and Chong, I still love. I mean, my dad, I'm like, Dad, I don't think this is good for me. I'm only like 10 years old, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, but it's funny because I when I go to comedy shows and when I would tour with a lot of comics, I like my comedy in spurts. Like, I like people to just give it to me. I don't like long stories. I can't uh, stand Dane Cook. I'm not bagging on the guy. I just right. don't, I can't deal with the whole long story. Like, I'm just like, I'm right. going to pull my tits out um, t- to get things going. I feel going, that way, you know, too. Right? <laughs> Dane Cook right now. <laughs> no, Maybe that's Dane, Dane, Dane Cook. Cook's thing. He's like, I need yeah. to figure out how to get these tits out. Yeah, <laughs> if, I, if I bore her long enough. No, but I, I can't do the whole long story right. going on yeah, and yeah. on and on. And I, I just like the quick You like Chris Rock and, style. Yeah, I Boom. do. And Rapid I like, fire, Kevin Hart. Kev- I haven't. Is that the one that says stay in your financial lane? Yes. Is that yeah, him? Yeah. Yes. I just heard him. <laughs> I just heard him for the first time. And I agree with you, Clint. I don't really care for anything that's racist or too raunchy, which is so funny because in doing, having, I've been retired from porn since 2008. A right. lot of people don't know that, but I've been retired since NOM basically for a long time. And, um, it's funny to me. Some people will be really, really raunchy thinking that I'll like it. And I think it's just too much. I don't like mm-hmm. rape jokes. There's just certain things I think should be off limits. It's well, you're a I classy feel. person. <laughs> Ooh, I think maybe, maybe that's debatable too. <laughs> 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 but I guess in the world of porn, maybe yes. Because back to what Clint was saying about preference, you know, like a lot of guys don't like Asian girls. I don't think it's a big deal if they don't. But then mm-hmm. for a lot of people, it's a particular fetish, you yeah, know, and yeah. I didn't do anything too extreme like you weren't going to get a triple anal backflip from me um but wow. <laughs> can we pause you know, that was pretty uh, that was like a yeah, figure porn. skating olympic thing it is, yeah. but you know porn is it's a sochi different. thing it's like yeah. triple anal backflip well yeah someone i'm sure someone out there I mean, well, speaking of triple I'm not familiar with your work i've, I've never <laughs> i don't <laughs> watch porn That's so good. i don't well, let's, let's, speaking of triple anal kidding. backflip uh, you're performing tonight right <laughs> yes and uh, you could see that at Club 939 tonight. No, that's that should come with a disclaimer. But I'm actually, uh, this is the second time I've been back. In yeah, the last Boston. time you were here, you were here with Charmaine. Yes, who Charmaine is, Starr. That's is right. my wife. Because <laughs> my last name is Mane, M-A-N-E. And she, every time she comes on our, she's been on our podcast twice. Okay. So every time she comes on a podcast, she changes her name to Charmaine. So oh, I was like, okay. There you go. That's your wife. Yes. But, uh, yeah, so I've been back out here for the second time uh, with Club 939. I love performing there. I mm-hmm. still – I do feature dance. I do <clears throat> burlesque shows. Um, I'm actually – this year, again, I'm back on the Comic-Con tour. So I do about 30 cities and countries of cosplaying and Comic-Con and 
It's really cool. And oh, we had to see we had some questions about that. Uh, we just had um, Chad just walked in. On if, if Clint, if you mind, yeah, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, get out of the We way don't mean here. to be. Oh, Clint, you can slide over by me. There you go. <laughs> You're welcome, Clint. Yes. <laughs> This is what we do at the Guys with Issues. We yeah. make dreams happen. And then next week, somebody else is going to leave and want to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm leaving. Can you guys get... Uh, oh, sorry, Tara already left. Um, we had um, a couple episodes ago, we had um, a woman, Lola Love, uh, who does burlesque, and she's promoting burlesque here in Hawaii, in uh, Chinatown. They do a lot of their shows. They have a production called uh, Pretty... Peacock Productions. Okay. So they do a lot of shows. So Burlesque, we, she was explaining to us what it was and how much fun it is. And I, I just wanted to put that plug in there for them because oh, yeah. we're, we, our scene, our comedy scene here in Hawaii is, is pretty small. Oh. We're trying to develop it. And the same as them, the burlesque scene here. So we're trying to develop that as well. It's funny, though, because a lot of the comedy, I actually do a monthly burlesque show in L.A. It's called Sultry Sweet, and I have, like, it rotates every month. Like, sometimes it'll be me, and I'll have a knife thrower Whoa. and uh, some <laughs> comedians. We try to mix it up because, as you said, it's, it all kind of comes from the same place, performing burlesque. A lot of it, you know, the history of burlesque, it's very trendy now, but it started in comedy. It started mm -hmm. in theater, and a lot of it was really violent, and it was very aggressive, and it was strictly for masturbation so I kind of crack up when a lot of girls think they're not stripping or they're not doing like when I first came on the burlesque scene so <clears> many <throat> girls would say oh she's done porn and I'm going but we're all here for the same reason we're all performing I'm sure there's some hierarchy probably in the comedy world too like I've seen it backstage where you'll get I mean some of them are just messed up anyway but you'll get some comedians who are like I don't want to work with that guy or he's yeah. a joke thief or he's a and I just laugh because I'm like wow there really is stuff that goes down in yeah. every single circle you know <laughs> like it doesn't there, are there joke thieves I don't know there, I just I would never dawn on there me. is things going on here <laughs> but we is won't that why you're leaving is that why you're going back to the mainland <laughs> we, we won't mention it because then we'd be advertising the other guys oh so. yeah <laughs> But uh, Chad Wago, who just walked in, a supposed comedian, Chad Wago, who is supposed? a yeah, that's that's his name. Because sometimes he's just Chad Wago, oh, okay. <laughs> which is still okay, right, Chad? Sure. See, see? <laughs> there's his comedy right there. <laughs> it's just short. Um, just okay. That that's going on the uh, pull quotes for the first album. Yeah. So we wanted to ask you some questions. Uh, first of all, ask, well, ask not you. Chad. Ask yeah. you. <laughs> First of all, how is Kauai? Did you make it to Kauai? Last time you were here on a show, you mentioned that you love Kauai. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, I, well, I shouldn't say that right. But no, the first time I actually ever came to, to the islands was to Kauai. And that was in 2000, uh, 2000. And I took a trip by myself. I've taken so many trips by myself. Like I used to go to Japan alone four, five times a year just to go shopping. Now I have to cut it back. But um, I... That's, that's living the dream. Uh, I, I, I want to go shopping. I don't want to go to the mall. How about Japan? <laughs> I wish someday I can say that. Although they don't make my size clothes there, so. Not mine either. I just squeeze into it. Uh, you're super tall for them, yeah. I guess. Well, did I, I just come out racist, Chad? I, th I think that, uh, you know, you might find your size clothes there, James. There are uh, sumo tori. Oh, that's right. Uh, but they wear thong. and thong. <laughs> You'll find shirts. <laughs> you yeah. got to stick with the same pants that you, that you came in like with. Well, I can go down south to like Taiwan where they make the clothes. Or is, was that? <laughs> is that not good? <laughs> was that bad? Um, uh, we asked more questions about any, uh, any uh, your website you want to push or any promotions you want to push before we run out of time with you? Oh. Are we out of time? No. Well, so, I mean, everything is at terrapatrick.com. Even though I'm retired, I still, of course, have my website. Mm -hmm. um, everything is, my calendar's on my website. My store's on my website. Everything Tara Patrick is on terrapatrick.com. And, yeah, I'll be at WonderCon, Comic-Con San Diego. I mean, I've kind of parlayed all the stuff I did into adults. You know, I still have my flashlight, and uh, I still do strip clubs. We mentioned that earlier, the flashlight. Will you be selling your flashlight Tonight. No, I don't. F I mean, I don't do fulfillment on any of that stuff anymore. I used to travel with some of the novelties and sell them, but I have a store now online. Okay, and was, I, mean, I guess it'd be vagina. weird. No, you know, it's actually funny. You know what? Who buys a lot of my sex toys? Women. Like I've had women push 
men out of the way. I had a woman one time go, I want your flashlight, Tara. She kept thinking it was a flashlight. And she was very <laughs> southern and very proper. She's like, oh, I'm going to get into this tonight. Like, I was just sitting there. But she like, wouldn't be able to enjoy it the way a man would in- enjoy it, right? I mean, well, how would she? I, I didn't ask. I don't know. I mean, I, anything is possible. That's the funny. That is the one of the best things that I love about having been in the industry mm-hmm. and still That's why I still travel. That's why I still tour, even though even with Comic-Con. I mean, I've always said guys are into, like, comics and chicks and Mm -hmm. gaming and porn. So that's kind of why, like I said, I just parlayed my business over to Comic-Con because even though I did video games, I started in porn. I started in hardcore. I started as a penthouse model, as a playmate. So for me, you know, like, I did 10 USO tours. If I'm going to keep some guy from getting his head blown off in duty... Or someone's going to come see me at a strip club or somebody's going to buy my vagina. I'm just, I'm so appreciative to my fans. And 20 years, you know, I've been working as a model and traveling. So, I, I mean, I feel really lucky. I like how you just say that. You can buy your vagina. You can buy my it? mouth, too. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean. No, I don't think any comedian can ever say anything like that. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can Market buy. Market Trolls just shows up. You can buy my vagina. Yeah, it's. I think millions have sold. I've wow. got I've got millions of satisfied customers. I I will get <laughs> one. Like a thing. We were talking about it earlier, like before you walked in uh, with with Clint and Russell. Like, okay, if you got it, would you use it? I would definitely use it. Of course. It. What you're gonna put it on the mantle? You're gonna use it as an ashtray. I mean, or I guess really some guys that, like they would say, "Oh no, I don't use it, but I own it. I don't use it." <laughs> Clint said he would use it here with us in here. <laughs> was, wow, really. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. right there's there. a designated spot yeah and i mean oh i finished my second book it's called happy ending so that should come out oh in nice a few months it's the follow-up to sinner takes all i can use my hands to do other things too a writer now there you go so, yeah and so, so um and you can get the book on your website Yes, well, it's uh, published by Penguin Group, so it's on Amazon. I mean, I have a huge pro- author profile over on Amazon.com. Nice. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Writing was good. It was really cathartic, and it was it was nice to finish the second book because uh, there was a lot of unanswered questions from the first book. Like people wanted to know, kind of after I retired, what my life was like and how it ended or began, rebegan, and. Mm stuff like that so okay we have a few more questions for you that we uh some of our fans uh wanted to ask and i guess we'll, a- we'll ask them in like rapid a light- fire come on yeah rapid fire <laughs> questions <laughs> uh, lightning round lightning round yeah. in the apocalypse do you take your flashlight or flashlight flashlight okay Mag-light. i guess it's yours you got your vagina <laughs> with you so <laughs> you don't need it's like hey i can't see but that's right i got two vaginas <laughs> um, <laughs> That could well, I be guess, useful, though, in the yeah, apocalypse. I guess for me. Uh, okay. Uh, how did you um, get involved in the convention scene, you know, the comic uh, convention scene? The first Comic-Con I ever did was actually in 2003, and I just went as a spectator because I'm a huge Punisher fan. I love the Punisher, uh, Spider-Man. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I love Marvel characters. And uh, I just went as a spectator, and then a few years later, I end- the first video game I did was called Backyard Wrestling with mm-hmm. the Insane Clown Posse. And then um, the second one was before Saints Row. I did a Grand Theft Auto. But I remember the guys were like, it was a dude fest. And they were like, we need to have a hot chick, you know, here to to sign and and like kind of wrangle the guys and stuff. So um, that was just how it began. And I love now that Comic-Con is such a mecca for women. Like I'm going to be at, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love Mm. Star Wars. For years, I would go to the conventions, but there wasn't really a platform for girls or Mm -hmm. models or women to kind of really... I, for me, it was always in the back of my head was how can I make money doing this? That's an Asian thing, I guess. <laughs> but, um, you know, my parents. True. And I love that about you. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Celebration Star Wars is this, year's, this year, too. So I'm actually trying to get on. I, I, would, I would love. I don't, I don't have any desire to be a regular actress, a mainstream actress. But I would love to do Star Wars. I would love to do something sci-fi or or like X-Men or something. Maybe Psylocke, it's... she's my favorite. I think I could do a awesome. really good Psylocke. So. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Uh, celebrity sex tape, overrated or guilty pleasure? 
I think it depends who it is. I mean, I, I think it's a clever marketing tool. I think that in the world today, it's very hard to stand out. I think branding is something that's obviously imperative to going to the next level. And uh, if you're, you know, what better way to go to the next level than to, I mean, Kim Kardashian, it's kind of just that proven method of getting your name out there, getting famous, getting recognized. It doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't work for everybody. So don't start sending your tapes to Vivid yet. Although Vivid, <laughs> and I don't get any commission on this, but and but Vivid is the place to you know send your sex tapes. But you know if I could see two people in a sex tape, and I'll take myself out of it, but I don't really want to. Um, <laughs> Christian Bale, I might come back and do a movie because people always ask if I would come back. So maybe if Christian Bale or I mean my porn, my favorite is like Three Ten to Yuma. I love. I have a really big thing for Christian Bale and mm-hmm. and. Um, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> I'm, not Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> I'm not even going to keep going. But yeah, like, so if, if, you know, if I got a few phone calls. Oh, then... so a three way scene. <laughs> yeah. Would they have to touch each other? No, I, it's all me. It's all me. I'm greedy. I'll, I'll handle everything. She, she's doing all the work. I'm doing all the work. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, just a few more. Uh, I know you guys have uh, you guys have to get going, but um, Clint's like, I want to talk. This was my show. Clint, sorry. I'm He's the like, one. Once that bitch is gone, I can go back to the mainland. I'm the one who's leaving. <laughs> what about me? Okay, uh, what what TV series are you currently watching? Like uh, right now, we're watching uh, for us is Walking Dead. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, he's great, Norman Reedus. I just did uh, Sacramento Comic-Con with him. That's the other cool thing about doing Comic-Con is I meet some really cool people. And uh, he's great. He's like a really, really nice guy. Um, I'm actually watching Deadly Women on ID Channel. I'm really into serial killers, oh, uh, wow. psychology about murder. I like the ID Channel, which has a lot of, like, murder. But they're real. Like, it's like real CSI mm. type stuff. So you're not a fan of Criminal Minds or... No, I, I don't think I've seen any of those shows. Mm. I like it. That's yeah. one thing I watch. That's one I like the real one. I like that narrator. He's got that voice. I want him to narrate my life. The bloody knife <laughs> was disposed of. Like, I don't know. I'm just like, wow, it was? Like, it's just creepy to me. And I don't know why. What I get more into, it's not the macabre for me. It's like, why are people so fucked up like that? Why do they have issues? You know, what are their issues? Well, we are the guys with issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your dating deal breaker? For me, it's, uh, I, I can't stand when girls start with sentences with the word like. Like, <laughs> da, 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 like, da, da, for him, for you, it's what? Whiny girls. Whiny girls. Chad, what was yours? I don't remember right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bleeding the fifth. Bleeding right. the fifth. Uh, somebody said, like, they don't like when a girl sucks her, or when somebody sucks their teeth or something like that. So what would be a deal breaker for you in, on a date or someone you're dating? Smoking. I can't. I don't do smoking. I don't like smoke at all. <laughs> I was gonna say, was that an open? I thought that one might have been an open. I was like, is that an open? No, um, it's Chad's. <laughs> it's holding it for him. Smoking is. I, I just. I yeah. Uh, I just have it. And um, chewing with your mouth open. I, oh, I can't. I stand cannot that. stand that. And um, I, I would probably say manners. You can kind of tell right away when someone is. Respectful. Yeah, I mean, look, we. Yeah, we're all there sometimes just for the. <laughs> for the one night or whatever but mm. any anything long term like you just like oh my gosh i can't believe i just said that you, i mean a man who open opens the door for you walks on the opposite side did of the i open the, did i hold the door open for you guys <laughs> okay all right. <laughs> no, and i wasn't smoking like, right? oh my god you didn't <laughs> why are you whining all of a sudden <laughs> oh, like next time hold open the door <laughs> <laughs> okay, out of the three of us, we we didn't know Clint was still going to be here. So out of the three of us, I guess well, Chad just walked in, but out of myself, Clint was here first. Okay, He's myself, here. Russell. Well, but then if it's Clint, then we already it's no. Okay, it's got to be Chad because Clint's too good looking compared to us. <laughs> so out of myself, Russell, and Chad, who would you sleep with, kill, or or marry? Oh, we did this last time. I think that was on another show, it but yeah. It was, yeah. yes. And I think the guy that I was going to kill, um, I hope it wasn't you. No, no, no. It wasn't It wasn't this show. It wasn't this show. <laughs> Let's see. So I would sleep with you. Oh, yes. And I would I'd marry you because you're definitely a gentle soul. I would only kill you. I don't know. I, I see some sort of 
lurkiness. Like, I don't know. Like, there's something <laughs> under there. He's quiet creepiness. and kind of observing. Creepy. Creepiness. Creepy. And that's why he's a stand up comedian. Because if I just are. get rid of him right away, there's no problem. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotta get rid of him before he gets rid of me. Well, I guess, Russell, you're lucky she would marry you. I guess. Yeah, you've got that. Yeah. You, I would just. You I'll are just relationship material. I am relationship. You have, do you. I could tell. Uh, it'd be too much talking and I'd have to just work on you and uh, I don't know. I just, uh, too much work. You listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so he's talking too much. So you're like a quiet guy or yeah, I'm fire. I mean, I'm definitely super, super hyper and I have got a lot of fire. I need some water to my fire. I need to be restrained quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you, like, you know, it's like really hard. <laughs> would you be able to handle that? If she, <laughs> if you were going to marry her and she started whining, would you still marry her? Would that be a deal breaker for you? I'd still marry her. <laughs> he just would look at yeah. me. He's like, okay, I can well, put up with it for so a while. I'm an ocean of love. I must <laughs> calm her down. <laughs> <laughs> and I apparently talk too much. So <laughs> my feelings are hurt. But she slept with me. Do I still win? I guess I still win. It's Tara Patrick. All right. So you guys hear that? I slept with Tara Patrick. <laughs> well, just if I sleep right now, I can say I slept and you're here in the room, but we didn't have sex. But anyways, it's getting weird. Uh, no, I thought I thought you um, you guys were on a schedule, but I guess uh, Stuart just walked out. Um, My ride's gone, so yeah. that leaves Clint. That's it. Yeah. So well, but real quick, again, 939 KL Moku Street tonight. Yep. Tonight. Uh, 939 uh, club 939. Hawaii's premier gentlemen's club. Uh, Tara Patrick will be performing. Two shows. Two shows tonight, two shows tomorrow. Uh, and here's a little secret, you guys. The way you impress a woman and to get uh, someone like Tara Patrick to remember you, who is very awesome with her fans. Don't get me wrong. She's very awesome with her fans. But if you want to be memorable, bring a gift. I mean, oh. it can be something. It doesn't have to be like, you know, here, I bought you diamonds. Right. It's something thoughtful. You just bring a gift and say, here, I, you know, I bought, I made some cookies, you know, or. Uh, well, I don't know about cookies. Yeah, I'm like, in there. <laughs> 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 cookies. Actually, I made a cash. container. <laughs> I made a container for cookies. Oh, wow. oh. <laughs> you know, it's funny because when I uh, actually, the first time I, uh, I usually go to Japan for just fun and I got tattooed there. I get tattooed there. I went to perform a show and they actually folded all the money and i say they the men that were they folded it into origamis and i wow. think it took me like a week to just <laughs> unwrap all of my money so i was working like the entire week you know what i mean it was like i did my show and then i felt like the whole week after that i was like oh my god i'm just trying to get this like 20 dollars you know to it was I couldn't take it to the bank. Like here, can you guys just take this and deposit it? I swear there is go go into like seven eleven and be like, How many cranes is it for that diet coke? <laughs> It's true. He, and I remember one guy made a tower, and he was so proud of him of himself. And I just thought, this is cool. I mean, it was, I guess, I, or so where they were not paying attention to my show that they were making origami the whole time. Oh, you know, right. I don't know. <laughs> You're over there dancing naked, and they're like, wait, they're like, I wait, must I, fold. I have to make a crane, yeah. <laughs> the wings must be perfect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. So, so that seriously though, if you guys are, uh, you, you guys listening, you guys come to a show either tonight or tomorrow. I would go tonight. Why tonight? Because a majority of people, they go out Thursday nights. Oh, do they? I would go like tonight because, you know, you have more time with you. I would be like, hey, can I take, you know, take a picture? Can I autograph? Are you that guy? You're that. See, you have issues. You're that guy that waits till the end, right? You wait till I'm packing up and every, I'm about ready to leave. Oh, Tara, wait a minute. You know, she, <laughs> she has been listening to the podcast. But, you know, I mean, well, I seriously. bought you cookies. Because, yeah, you know, because. I this for you, Tara. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy them all week. Yes, it's in the shape of my <laughs> cookie pan. You thought I was gonna say penis, right? Because Russell thinks I'm creepy. Oh. <laughs> Am I creepy? Stay away from bit? my wife, James. <laughs> you're not. You're not the one who got killed for creepiness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Uh, all right. So tonight, that's why you have me on the show, isn't it? To yes. Make you look better. To make me look better. Yeah. So I look like the hot girl. Um, but seriously, tonight um, at 939, Club 939. Hawaii's premier gentleman's club. 939 Kiyomoku Street performing twice, Miss Tara Patrick, and performing twice tomorrow. Bring a gift, say, you know, be nice, say hello, but I'll bring 
dollar bills because make it rain. Even I mean, in cranes, make it rain cranes. Make whatever. it crane. Maybe, <laughs> make maybe it that's crane. a. There you go. That's <laughs> what we're gonna call it. Make it crane. And you know when they when they, when they clap their hands to make the pigeons fly. They do oh. that. So maybe that's what they're doing when, when in Japan they go like that and they make the cranes. <laughs> See, I make a craney. I don't know. Did I make it racist, Chad? I'm sorry. Now you did. <laughs> when is your I show? I make clip? a crane. Tonight, too. Tonight, and then you leave tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. No, Oh, so you can still come and see my show. Yes, yeah, you can. I'm totally going to be there. We will be there tomorrow for sure. Oh, okay, good. Yes, because we have good our thing tonight. But go to Club 939. Hawaii's Please. Premier Gentleman's Club. Yes. <laughs> and say hello to Tara Patrick. Tell her you guys heard her on the Guys With Issues comedy podcast. Actually, I'm staying through the weekend, too. So if anybody, what's going on? Is there anything good? or? Um... I'm asking on a radio show. I know. <laughs> hey, stay away from my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll exchange contact information and we will let you know what's going on. There's, there's a few shows. Chad is the one who's usually up to date with all the events and what's going on. Creepy Chad. Yes, creepy okay. Chad. <laughs> I'm always lurking around the corners. I was at shows. Say, I'll keep him <laughs> so he knows what's going on. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we'd like to thank you so much for thank being you. on the show. Thank you. Uh, we have. Thank you, my husband. <laughs> and I'm the ex, I guess. <laughs> you're the one night. There you uh, go. But you say it like it's a bad thing. See, I, she's like, you're the one night. I guess I was disappointed. <laughs> but I brought you a shirt. Oh, wow. our, our website is MarsComedy.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Um, we only have that size left, so I'm pretty Boy, sure it's, it's extra small. No, it's I can actually get one boob in there. Yeah. Oh, it's small. It is triple extra. <laughs> You watch, because I'm Asian. I will have this bedazzled with ribbons and super tight made into a dress. Please do. Take a picture. Take a picture. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. And I'll do that while I'm making cranes and cooking and all that stuff. Chad will make cranes and we'll bring it for you tomorrow. (laughs) Okay. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, Tara Patrick. We love you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stuart. Have a good show, Clint. Thank you for bringing her down. Happy last show. Happy last show. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. And then we'll make sure that the people who come to our show tonight get these flyers so they know where to go tomorrow night. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Ooh. Thank you guys. <laughs> I know he's like, Russell Russell Russell. I guess we'll go to a commercial. Make it crane. Uh. <laughs> All right, you guys want to get back on the mics? You can, uh, Use my uh, wife's headset. Thank you. What did you do? Put on um, radio? No, we're still going. We're still alive. Oh, okay. We just I thought you said we went to a commercial. We didn't go to a commercial. We went to the instrumental of Make It Crane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's all live. In the studio. Uh, Russell. On yeah. the twos and threes. What? Got to hustle. Uh-huh. With that Chad Wago, uh-huh. we're about to bust a nut. Uh-huh. Tara Patrick, whoa, and we getting nuts. Uh-huh. Monet on the three zeros. Uh-huh. What's up, mofos? On. <laughs> I lost it. But we continue on, yeah. and then we stop. And we turn up the headset. <laughs> we just continue until we're done. Yeah. What? Oh man, that was awesome, Tara Patrick. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, dude, yeah, man. She was amazing in real life. Yes. She, yeah, she gorgeous, looks way better dude. than she yeah. does on, in her movies. I'm so sweaty right now. <laughs> yeah, my, I, you, I'm, uh, you need to go in the corner for a little bit? And- nah, dude. I wanted to take a selfie with her for my Instagram. And I freaked out. I was like, I can't even ask her. Oh, She's too gorgeous. Sorry, dude. Damn they, it. they have some place to go. Normally, we ask for pictures, yeah. but you can have a selfie with her flyer. I have a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're also welcome to her show tomorrow night. Yeah, Let us know. Right we'll, on. we'll look at the door for you. Cool. Um, wow. How do you segue into 
just Clint after Tara Patrick. <laughs> Tara Patrick. Dude, but that was in, like she was a very interesting person to listen yeah. to talk. Like I said, and she's like, sharp. I usually I usually zone out like every time a chick talks. Like you know what I'm saying? Like every single time. But I was like 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 generally just listening, like, God, oh, she's interesting. She was well spoken. Yeah. Sharp like you said, you know. So and it was so, like before yeah. you ever had sex. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like Chad now. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I'm sorry. Jeff. I'm a very good listener. <laughs> that, that was cool, though. She was like, "Oh, you know, like you know, the fantasy is always one thing. You're like, oh, you think you know, she gets nuts, a couple nights of party or whatever." We kind of found out that she just hangs out, drinks caramel tea, and watches uh, uh, Kelly in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like just a normal everyday person. But like that's what amazes me with a lot of these um, uh, adult stars that come onto our podcast. Evelyn Lynn, I miss you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she, she, I was like Evelyn Lynn was like Evelyn Lynn actually, she looks like the the girl next door. I guess the Asian girl next door, but she acts that way too. She's very sweet and she's very um, cute. Yep. She doesn't you 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 don't you forget that this girl takes large you know cocks to the face, and, and then you talk to her and you're like, wow, she's super sweet. I, I don't know how to segue into Clint Ballsway. God damn it! I'm disappointed too. <laughs> Dude, I haven't I haven't watched her work in some time, but you know Tara Patrick there yeah. for a while. Yeah, she had my heart. You know, oh, yeah? yeah, yeah. I was a uh, a bigger fan at one point in time. You know, before she retired. Right, 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 right. Uh, I had her best of film. Uh, those that stuff was not going through my head when she was sitting on the couch next to me, though. Oh, yeah. Gosh, she was gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, she's beautiful. She's super yeah. tall. I mean, yeah, was... five nine, dude, and then with those shoes. Yeah, the guys with issues does it right now when you leave. Man. We treat you good. Yeah. <laughs> right. In fact, um, when, when London was here, we actually, uh, London Keys was here, we we got her tattooed. So we take care of our guests. So it was just messed up because some of our guests that we didn't take care of, they're probably like, I didn't get anything. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't care enough to send you the very best. Mm-hmm. All right. So now, uh, those of you listening, we do... Um, ask that you guys go check out um, Tara Patrick yep. at uh, Club 939. Hawaii's Premier Gentleman's Club. That's March 26th and 27th at 9 p.m. Uh, 939K Almoku Street. Uh, their website is uh, club939.com. The show starts at 9 and she gets she goes on stage twice a night. Uh, give them a call if you need more information, 952-9300. Yep. Or email us at guyswithissues at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let us know how you felt about the interview that we just had with her. You can go to MarsComedy.com. There's a new tab on the right of the screen where you can leave voicemail. No, we took that off. But we'll put it back on. Oh, okay. I guess uh, we took that off because... Just yell at your computer screen. <laughs> and then and then text us what you said. <laughs> yell at your computer screen and Instagram it to us. <laughs> Hashtag guys with issues. That would be awesome. If you guys could do that, I would love you so much. Like... I would love you hard, even if you're a man. Is that weird? Anyway, so Clint Balsley is leaving uh, April 3rd. True, April 3rd, yeah. April 3rd. He's going back to? I'm going back to Ohio. Ohio. My home state, yeah. Uh. Buckeyes up there. Are you a Buckeyes fan? I am. Huge Buckeyes fan. The Ohio State. Mm. The. Yeah. Uh, I see like the heartland of America, you know what I'm saying? Like driving around cornfields, like the red barns, like uh, boredom. Yeah. Yeah. So you're the kind of... <laughs> no yeah. Honolulu nightlife, no Waikiki, no beautiful, you know, gorgeous models all over the place. Mm-hmm. Just, there's some yeah. Amish ladies Yay, about you know. 10 miles from my home. They sell their baked goods. Yeah. No more Tara oh. Patrick sitting next to you. God damn it. I just want to keep talking. Did you, did, you get the, did you get the notion that if she didn't work tonight, she'd be at your show? Oh, she, right? She kind right? of said that, yeah. She said, what's going on? You know, in fact, when she said, what's going on this weekend, I, in my head, I was like, we're going to make a show. <laughs> no, <laughs> for real. I should have, like, put my, like, I handed her my phone, and I was like, She's not gonna put it yeah. in there. <laughs> she you backed up. I, mean? so I was like, "Oh, I thought she was going to." Dude, uh, if she put my number in her phone, I would have missed my grandmother's funeral to like do whatever <laughs> she wanted to do. Down. She. Dude. We need to uh, talk to Lee uh, over here at Hawaiian Brian's and see if we can bump somebody's show and do a comedy show <laughs> just for Tara Patrick. 
Just be like a private show just for Tara Patrick and fr- and guests and friends. So she did comedy though. She had jokes and everything. I, like, I didn't want to put her on the spot, like, but I kind of wanted to hear some of her jokes. You yeah. know, I kind of did too. But it's yeah. kind of like if somebody asked us, "Oh, what's your joke?" and you're kind of like, "I don't yeah. do jokes." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the wanna... show. Right. Yeah. So that's how I was thinking. Now nah, let's just let it go. <laughs> but what, a, what about that move? What about the, uh, the triple tr- anal? Yeah. Flip. That's sure. impressive. <laughs> I don't know, man. Now I'm, I'm so tempted to start a show to uh, <laughs> Saturday night. Saturday night on the bill. Bro. Yep, Hawaiian Brian's Crossroads. Uh, Clint Balsley's second show. <laughs> second bye bye. Back limited engagement. <laughs> now we we just play. He didn't leave though. <laughs> Number two. Uh, Forty dollars for guys to get in. Five dollars for women. <laughs> that would be something. We can do like an all women show. Like, oh no! no I mean, be it'd be it'd be just the guys. Um, well, whoever performs, men or women performs. All but, women audience. Yes, you mean. yeah, audience. All female audience, and they have to all be naked. Mm. Man, now we talking. Yo, for real. Uh, so if you guys want to book something here at um, the Crossroads at Hawaiian Brian's or the studio at Hawaiian Brian's, uh, give Lee a call. Lee Anderson. Uh, he will handle the bookings. Uh, call him at eight zero eight seven eight one six five two two. That's 808-781-6522. And tell him the guys with issues sent you. And he'll give you a discount um, of what, 1% or 0%? None percent. None percent. No, none percent. <laughs> he'll say, yeah, this counts. So, <laughs> that yeah. counts too. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's talk to our friend Clint who uh, who, is, who is leaving. Why Word up. we are having this show in the first place. It wasn't because of Tara Patch. I mean – well, wow. that was a nice surprise. You think I should drink her Coke? She said she took one drink out of it. I that, told would that, you would that be weird? I didn't know it was should here. I, should if, I drink? If you weren't going to, well, I was. Is this her? Is this her cup too? Yeah, that's just ice, though. She put her mouth on this. I'm going to drink it right now. Oh, yeah. All right. How do you feel? <laughs> How does it feel? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It tastes like the thousands of penises. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. There was also a vagina. You respect her, <laughs> damn it. It tastes like Coke. Treat your wife <laughs> with respect, shit. sir. I do. But that's the first time where you get disappointed by tasting Coke out of a Coke can. You're like, damn it. I was hoping for like some hair or something. Uh, I was, it was hoping it was going to taste like rainbows. <laughs> it was just Coke. Like a unicorn's ass. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. It was just Coca Cola. So, uh, you, uh, you were in the military? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, let's go back to... Yeah, yeah. I was in the military for like nine years. Uh, I joined when I was 25. And uh, I've been in a, a couple different places. I went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Uh, I stayed there five years. Like, nobody ever asks to go there on purpose. I was going to say... It just kind of happens to you. I was, I was going to yeah. say, that's when you ask to leave the military. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, like, after a while, like, I knew, like, where all the good restaurants were. There's a lot of good soul food, Mexican food, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And... And I knew a lot of the like the the higher up, more important people of the installation, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, and then I went to Korea. I lived in Korea for a year, which was amazing. Oh man, uh, yeah. So like Seoul is by far like the dopest big city I've ever been to. Really, Seoul is off the chain, dude. Like Itaewon or uh, Hongdae University, that area. Like like when I first got here, like you'd hear Zanzibar, go to Zanzibar, you know, yeah. and you're like, oh, dude, Zanzibar's gonna be off the chain. And you go there, and it's like <laughs> all these fucking like like asshole military people like trying to fight each other. It sucked, man, you know. So, but they have mega clubs in Seoul that hold like no shit, five hundred, six hundred kids, and they're just bouncing to hip hop, like just just getting it, loving oh. it. All of them just excited to be around you because you're an American, you know. And like we would just make up like random dance moves, and they would start doing it. Like, yo, all right, <laughs> right? yo, you shuffle every day. No, not every day. Sometimes I do, not every day, but I do. Oh, there's shuffle. Arabs there too. Huh? No, there's that much. The, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my friend. A, I don't do a good Asian. I don't do a, <laughs> no, I, I do do a good Asian, though. Yeah. Tara, you know? oh. yeah. Yeah. Tara Patrick's part Asian. I know. And I, Damn it. <laughs> Yes, my so, friend. You do a do that. You do a shuffle, my friend. I I, ooh, I shuffle it. <laughs> Not every day, but once or twice a week. <laughs> okay, hey. you know I I did want to let our listeners know um of your story, which touched touched me and a lot of people. Even my daughter was uh, she loved the story. 
Thank you. I yeah. told her about it. Um, and I would like for you to tell the story. I don't want to be the one, you know. Okay. Uh, where you rescued a dog. Okay. So, yeah, man, I was, like, hiking out in the uh, Wahiwa in the Eva Forest Reserve. And it's pretty dense, man. Like, a lot of the uh, trails and stuff are, like, uh, kind of rugged and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. kind of, like, overgrown. And I was talking to my friend about... Um, about like how God is in everything, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like like just the energy of God, like and when you're in nature, like you feel like in the. We're just like yeah, man. We're like hippie out. Like everything's alive, you know. It's like awesome. And this like dog walks out, up to us out of nowhere, and he's so sick, man. He's like he was emaciated. He was super skinny. You could see his ribs and his hip bones, and he like his eye was like real jacked up. I don't know if it was scratched or he had some kind of like conjunctivitis or pink mm-hmm. eye, you know, whatever. So yeah, and um. And so, yeah, like, he followed me for, like, four or five hours, like, because I was lost in, in this dense forest, you know, mm-hmm. and he followed me, and, uh, and like, we had to, like, cross, like, creeks and all this stuff, and, um, like, whenever I would stop, he would lay down. Like, you could just tell, man, I, I gave him, like, I had, like, like, trail mix and beef jerky. I gave him, like, half of my snacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, but he made it back to the car, and he just slept. You could just tell, like, he was, he finally exhausted. felt safe, and he was exhausted. He was probably lost for about three days, so about a week or something like that, you know? So I took him home, and uh, I started trying to find, like, organizations, like, no kill sh- uh, no kill shelters that right, would take right. him in and stuff. Nobody would get back with me. And so we're talking about a pit bull that used to be a hunting dog. He's got, you know, he's, he's injured. He had worms. He had, like, open uh, abrasions, like, open cuts on his shoulders mm-hmm. and on his paws. And his eye was really sick. And so, and he used to be a hunting dog, you know, I mean, this dude probably had a pretty rough little life, you know, or whatever. So nobody would get back with me. I started caring for him. Um, you know, like he had ticks all over him. Like they were size of corn, like oh, huge ticks. Goodness, bro. Yeah. All that blood off of him. Yeah, man. So I just, you know, I cared for him and then eventually found somebody that would take him, you know, uh, take him in and a real nice woman. Um, it was actually a, like a comedian friend of ours, Cameo Lawrence. Oh yeah, 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 Cam. yeah, Cam's good people, man. You know, and she came over. It's funny in a brand new t- 2014 Audi convertible, <laughs> like nice white dude. It's so clean, right? And she to, um, to pick up a dog to pick up this dog. Yeah, and she's a um, <laughs> she's a health professional. She dresses like a businesswoman on a daily basis. Oh, and she comes over, bro. Sits down right in my grass, like right in my front yard, just. Bam, like just sits down with the dog, starts petting him, loving on him, loads him up into the front seat of the convertible and then takes him home. And I was like, dude, I will follow you home. You know what I mean? Like, I, you don't have to put this big beast. Right. You know, but she was like cool with it. So, um, yeah, man. So she took him in and it was like it was kind of funny because like one of the the things that I'll end on in this story is that like he had such a rough life. You could tell like. Like, once he finally got his energy back, like, two or three weeks in, he started kind of playing and wow, kind of yeah, flopping yeah. around and stuff like that. But, like, we had to, like, assure him it was okay to have a good time. Oh, you know, right, it's right, okay right. to play, buddy. It's okay to play, you know, and stuff like that. Like, like this dude, like, he didn't know how to live, but he wanted to. You know, like, he fought to get Good there. So, it was cool, man. You had to kind of, like, tell him, it's okay. We, we're not, we're not going to do anything to harm you. So, mm-hmm. it looks, I guess somebody must have been abusing him. Yeah, I think he was probably, like, pretty beat up. or Damn. Like, I'd never heard this dog bark, not one time. I don't know if they, like, removed the bark from him oh or put, a, like, one of those electric shock collars on him. You wow. know, but, I mean, some hunters, they take good, real good care of their dogs. Some yeah. of them don't. Some of them, it's just a tool they use to hunt. But yeah. um, Jerks. Yeah. So. Oh, that's awesome of you. And, and Thanks, to man. actually look for... Someone who is caring and Cameo is a very sweet person. So Yeah, she's really yeah. And um she, you know, she's uh a single woman, she lives by herself, so she probably needed a big a big you know, guy like that to, to be around and stuff and then she had the money to properly care for him too because yeah. of her profession and Right, right. Yeah. There's a there was a young uh lesbian couple that was interested in the dog and uh and I thought that was cool because like, you know, they you never they're not gonna have kids. So they're always going to put that dog first, but right, right. Uh, low income kind of sort of, you know, so I was uh, like, yeah, it's going to need extra uh, attention right. and, and you're going to have the finances to, to take them to the vet and, and cause it, yeah, the vets can get pretty expensive. Yeah. And Cameo went out and bought like the best dog food you could buy, like that bountiful, whatever it's like. Beneful. Beneful. Yeah. yeah. She was like, oh, he loves it. I'm like, cause that stuff's like flake gold and shit in there, man. It's like, you know, yeah, my mom bucks used, for the big one. My mom used to buy that for uh, our or I think she still does buys that for my daughter's dog and like feeds it. and then she cooks chicken too and puts it in there and feeds him 
she oh, cool. they feed him really they're always like wondering why he's not eating it's like he just ate a couple hours dogs don't eat all the time <laughs> you know what though like i really don't even like dogs though to be honest yeah. with you like like I, like i'm a sweet person mm. right but uh not a big fan of dogs because I have two other dogs. I have a pug and a Jack Russell. <laughs> mm-hmm. and my Jack Russell is an asshole. Jack yeah. Russell. Like straight up, bro. Like he's the biggest dick. And so like I never let the Jack Russell play with Mana. We named him Mana because of, we were talking about God and the spiritual energy mm-hmm. and stuff, the, the pit bull. I uh, never let the pit bull play with the, the Jack because I thought, you know, the Jack would be an asshole. And I always knew that Mana had the ability to rip someone's face off. <laughs> like, I always knew in the back of my mind that, like, like you know, I let my daughter play with him, like, but at first, like, at a distance. Right. I mean, you know. You never know. Yeah, like, what are you going to do? This dude, I mean, this dog probably weighed 60 pounds. Could least, have, like, dude. some flashback. Like, she looked like the person that used to beat him or something. Yeah, yeah. This dog was a horse, dude. His dick was, like, bigger than all these mics combined. He was an right. animal. You know what I mean? So... I like um, how this story is taking a turn. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. But it was oh. a sweet story. Yes. I let him play with the pug, though, right? right. And and we call her Pig Dog. You the know, pug? The pug. He got excited when we started calling her Pig Dog, you know, because he's uh, – we had a flashback, so I don't know. But. So did he rip Pig Dog's face off? <laughs> no, it was already smashed. It'd be hard to actually <laughs> – I was I was gonna see I was gonna go into because you were talking about looking for shelters that don't kill or euthanize the dogs. Yeah, yeah. So what happened over a couple of weeks ago? Me and my daughter took a picture. Uh, there's this thing called uh, hashtag mutt bombing, which is um, in support for uh, Dallas Pets Alive. Okay. And they're trying to make Dallas a, a city that they don't euthanize dogs. That they always try to find homes for dogs. So what they do is they take pictures, like celebrity pictures, like that Ellen DeGeneres picture at the um, Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then they add a dog's face in there, mm-hmm. like like the dog was there too. So they they Photoshop the dog's face in there. So you know the dog photo bomb. So uh, you can check their uh, website muttbombing dot com. That's mutt. It has two T's. Right. So muttbombing.com. And then you can show your support uh, for them. My daughter and I did one where we have a picture of me and her on um, um, a shuttle car when we were on Maui. And we photoshopped a dog in there because uh, we love dogs. (laughs) (laughs) I like dogs. Unlike some people. I do like dogs. (laughs) But no, seriously, though, honestly... That was awesome that you rescued Mana. You took him out of there. Who knows how long Mana was in there? Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It, or it could still be there. It could be, you know, Mana be lifeless in there today without you bringing him out. So. Well, he, he was definitely a survivor, man. He uh, he wanted to make it, so. Yeah. And then that's awesome that you brought him out. Thank you, sir. So that was very kind of you. <laughs> kind of you. Mm-hmm. And um, on, uh, on that note... We have our. Uh, we need to move on because we're running short on time. Mm-hmm. So we're going to ask our fan okay. participation can I, can I push fan the question. Can I push the button? Push the button. <laughs> fan question. <laughs> this is new. We got new uh, equipment here. We, yeah, we, I like that one. Uh, let's see. Um, the, the question for oh, I should have asked Tara this, but we're running out of time. So I'll ask. Um, uh, Clint here. What okay. songs do you listen to when you are pissed off? We have asked our fans. So while you think about that, we have asked our fans for a question. Uh, what songs do you listen to? Uh, for my one of my f- few friends, Audio Lab Hawaii, whose uh, Twitter handle is at Audio Lab Hawaii number one, uh, Audio Lab Hawaii one. Harry Nilsson, You're Breaking My Heart. Now, if you haven't heard that song before, uh, I, uh, go check it out. Uh, you can, um, they have a video on YouTube that has the lyrics on it. And uh, yeah, that's a pissed off song right there for sure. So I don't know, if, <laughs> I don't know you're looking at me. Russell, you got any? Like, uh, no, I think uh, like for me though, I'll probably like a, uh, like a prayer. Like a prayer of Madonna? Yeah. Life is a mess. Oh, we locked eyes. And yeah, <laughs> it's on. Yeah, no, I, I don't listen to anything when I'm mad, dude. I I will straight cut the stereo off. Like in the car, I'm just like, fuck that, we're going home. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it just goes off. What about you, Russell? Me, Tupac, hit him up. That's mine. Hit him up. How does that go? Uh, no, 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 no. You tell me how I go. <laughs> is that is that that's the dig on Biggie? So I fuck your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Hey, oh, I hate this song. 
I hate that song. I'm mad. No, I'm going to play the song I like. The best. <laughs> Go for it. Because he's talking First about my off, favorite rapper. Fuck you, bitch, in the click you claim west side yeah. when we ride. Look at the Ohio yeah. boy, man. Yeah. But I fucked your wife. He's not talking about. Oh, yeah, he, he is. is talking about Biggie. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Tets. Okay, so uh, what about you, uh, Chad? Uh, for me, I would uh, listen. I'd, I usually listen to uh, something like uh, Bleeding Through for Love and Failing. Hardcore stuff, metal. I couldn't find yeah. it. I was looking okay. for it. It's not on Spotify. All right, some of my listeners uh, or fan, other fans, say, Wash Wash by Prince Buster. Uh, Jesse Tinker put that on. Hmm. Um, cousin said, Tavita put, uh, we're going to fight for the right, fight for your right to party by the Beastie Boys. That's stupid there. Yeah. That's just dumb. Who would say that? I guess it, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe he's angry that they can't party. So then he's like, no, we got to party. My mom threw away my best porn, Omeg. That's why he's Busted. angry. <laughs> Maybe he's mad because uh, um, one of them is no longer alive, no longer with us. For, yeah. for me, I, I like like Russell. It's got to be angry rap when I, when I'm pissed and then, but then it, it just makes me even more. It jacks me up, you know. Like um, anything by Ice Cube. Um, uh, when it? you get really upset, you're listening to No Vaseline. Something like in that time, that mm-hmm. time Ice Cube, the angry Ice Cube, not the you can do it, put your ass into it, not that Ice Cube. Oh like, yay yay! Yeah, like the, it was a good day. N.W.A. No, not that <laughs> one either. Or N.W.A. You know, the Dope Man and uh, or Easy E, just some gangster stuff. Like straight out of Compton. Yes, mm. some Bubba Boys Sparks. In, no, not not so much. <laughs> <laughs> not so much. Stop being so white, Clint. <laughs> Excuse me, Clint. You're white, showing. Hey, one of the best uh, rappers of all time happens to be white, though. Hey, but it's not Bubba Sparks. Hey, but it is. Uh, no. <laughs> no. no. And he would wear uh, a Detroit Lions uh, jersey. Yeah. 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 Snow. Snow. Right. You're talking about snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In forma, in a sun of sun of the rain, a little moon, moon down. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Eminem is is like, why is my butt hurt all of a sudden? Like, this is what's going on, man. Something strange. All right, so today's guys with issues issue. Uh, we'll keep it real short because we're running short on time. Hey, see how that fits. Uh, when and see this, you're a parent too, so this is good for you too. Mm-hmm. When and how do you have the talk, you know, birds and bees, with mm-hmm. your kid? You have uh, two. Yeah, I have two little girls. Girls, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, one's 10. She turns 11 this summer, and uh, the other one's three. So, yeah, dude, I have no idea. You're, but they're 11 because mine's just 10, turns 11 um, in August, almost she around the same time. turns 11 in June. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, the same age. Wow. They're getting around that point where, you know, now they're wearing the, was it the, the, the chemise or whatever, the thing, because now shapes are coming. Not, yeah. Not really, but, you know, things are changing in the shirts when they wear, like, it looks different. Well, like, and, and plus, like, they, <clears throat> the way that the little girls' clothes are, like, tailored to, like, fit their little bodies shapely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to put them in a Mars Comedy shirt. You know what I'm saying? So you can't see none of that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like uh, it, it, we were talking about this earlier. Like, you said something about, uh, like, taking off a brawl or something like that. You know? Brawls. This is, this, all right. So I want to live in, like, an open commune, like, where I'm just naked and I have sex all the time right. with, like, random women. Well, this is when I no make it. No children around. No, yeah, in front of the children. <laughs> so that, then my, ki- my daughters won't want to have sex until they're, like, in their 30s, <laughs> which is the plan. You know what I mean? And if I had boys, I don't have any boys yet. I want to make sure there's two gay men that are in there that are having, you know, gay sex. Okay. So that yeah, then All that, day. There's no questions. It's all going to be happening in my house. <laughs> then they'll just know and they'll see it. And they'll, like, either want to or not want to do that. <laughs> At the right age. <laughs> Sounds very <Same>. Greek. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's my theory with uh, what's that that that, that A and E show, um, uh, Scared Straight or Extreme Scared Straight, where like they take all these kids to the prison and then have the prisoners scare them. Yeah. Now they always have the guys, the big tough guys, go up to the kids and you know, you want to be in here? You want to be my bitch? You want to be my bitch? But they don't actually show. Like, I think if, like for me, uh, when when I was, well, I guess in, in intermediate, and then I heard what they they rape you in prison. I am never going there. Yeah, <laughs> so if they just exactly. had the kids walk in and just show, you know, a a, 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 a little guy that kind of looks like one of these kids, and just like a big monster like me, just raping the dude, and then they need just, to just show rape. him American History X. See, the, yeah. uh, oh, not American History. For yeah. me, it was uh, American Me. Oh yeah, <laughs> you Pulp, know? Pulp Fiction. 
Don't Dude, look at me, puppet. You can only watch American History X like every couple of years, though. You yeah. know what I mean? They got to like recharge <laughs> and shit. I got to regroup, God man. God damn. Yeah. So that that that's um. That's the one with um, Ed it? Norton. Yeah, the, the the curb when he's yes. oh, the gun. I, I That's the first time I ever like seen that. Mm-hmm. He said, "Bite the curb." I was like, "What is that?" Bite the, oh my goodness! What did he do? <laughs> hey, you was, know what? You know what though? Like, I, I'm hoping I don't have to have a talk with the, like those girls that are like 15, 16. But mm-hmm. kids nowadays, man. I mean, they're 12, 11. You know what I'm saying? And talking the, about it, yeah. doing some of that it, stuff. It's yeah. not even just like a nowadays thing. I mean, I knew girls in intermediate school that were having sex. Like, and this is not just, what? like, my age. Uh, even, like, around my parents' generation, my mom knew a girl who had an abortion when she was 12. Well, that's those crazy, days, bro. that's... I think there was no sex ed, really. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't no... Um, Pono choices. Yeah, <laughs> it was no... What do you call that? Um, <laughs> For the kiki. Prophylactics. <laughs> and, you know, they didn't know about safe sex. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I would have a hard time. I've been contemplating the past couple of weeks, like, Maybe I should just tell her. Because the way I tell her, I could gross her out. Like I do with a lot of stuff that happens. Like when she sits on the floor, I'm like, oh, you, you just, you just, that's dirty. You don't sit on the floor. You know, when they're, when they're like five or six, they don't yeah, know. They yeah. just touch the ground or don't touch that. That's dirty. You know, somebody spit there. Maybe a homeless guy walked past and pissed there. And maybe the dog came out took a dump over there and you just put your hand and you're going to touch your face. You're going to you're gonna have all this stuff all over your face. And I just go into it with her. And then she's all of a sudden she's like. I'm never touching the ground ever yeah. again. Hey, the ground's made success. of lava. You know how I'm going to teach lava. my little girls about sex? Right there, Tara Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put some classic Tara Patrick on. The classic Tara and, and Ron Jeremy. God, she's a legend. Oh, Ron Jeremy. Maybe you yeah. show them Ron Jeremy and they'll be like, I'm never having sex never with a hedgehog it. ever. <laughs> Rocking the mullet still today. <laughs> Kids, let me show you a video of... <laughs> Mommy, Dude, I wanted uh-huh. to ask Terry if she'd watch my film, my home film. You have a and, home film? Yeah, I got, a, I got some home films. Some you home. know, like I think it's fucking disgusting. You ever like w- seen yourself like fucking? I seen it on the mirror. I'm sure, like for her, it's okay. Like right. she, like she's watching herself and she's like, God, I'm gorgeous. Yeah. I watch myself and I'm like, I need to shave my back. <laughs> I need to, you know. Okay, of course, this is when I was in shape, so it wasn't so bad. Now I'll be like, oh, my goodness, what the hell am I looking? How is she turned on right now? <laughs> yeah. Am I yeah, dying? Ago for am I dead? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> it's like, it doesn't even look like I'm moving. It just looks like I'm just, like, rocking my head up and down. Dude, I should call that girl and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying you made a video? No, I did not. I did not. No, when he was watching himself in mirrors. Oh. Yeah, yeah, in the mirror. You know, the mirror you're looking. You make a video, Chad? Hmm? No. You made a the so first one video. Time, the first time I ever saw myself on the on the v- mirror, I was like, yeah, "You flex like, like an American right. psycho." Well, He's I was like, in college. Yeah. I was a uh, um, I was Division <laughs> One football player. I was looking in the mirror like, "Yeah," because she couldn't see. I could see. I was looking like, Bleh. so I kind of like turned my hips so I can see. Yeah, you're smiling at yourself. <laughs> Opened up his stance a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because we were standing up at the time. So I was like, "Yeah, look at you." Oh, there's a couple more other times, but anyways, yeah, a, but never. Were you, ta- you talking to yourself while you're doing it? Like, yeah, with the first pick, <laughs> <in> the 1997 <laughs> draft. <laughs> Charlotte <laughs> chooses James <laughs> Money from University of Buffalo, number 79. <laughs> Dude, I used to do that when I was like when I was younger, and I was trying not to bust. I would think about anything else, like uh, like Barry Sanders. I'm like, God damn, he's run the ball. That's his third rush. Oh, dude, he jukes. And he jukes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, trying to think anything else. My friends besides. used to say they used to think of baseball, and I tried, and I was like, oh, this is whack. But mm. then uh, what I would do is think of my teachers from kindergarten up to sixth grade, and then because I had all older teachers back in an elementary so and then that was that helped me but then sometimes they'll get too soft it's like whoa i'm kind of losing it here yeah <laughs> i better look right back <laughs> at it look right back at it math was my thing math, you just calculate yeah. equations I, I would just start uh, thinking about like how, m- how much i have to pay for my bills saving up towards my next trip to vegas and then just like calculating things yeah that'll do it right there i'm already yeah. turned off myself I forgot know, ter- yeah. forgot tara patrick was here <laughs> said the asian man <laughs> mathematics <laughs> yeah you would think that that would help me don't you <laughs> like, oh. she's like chad where'd you go where, what are you doing <laughs> calculus <laughs> like, oh the postulates and the oh. theorems oh my all right so um i i I my parents never talked to me about it. I don't know the generation. My parents never said anything. I, pl- I already knew by you know 
magazines and TV by the time I was before I was even ten. What about you, Russell? Your parents ever had to talk? No, to you? nobody gave me the talk. I just you know you find out find out on your own eventually. Did they say that or they just ignored it? They just totally ignored it. So I think that's what local parents did. Our my you know your parents and my parents' generation. I think it was just like. They'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah but you know what? Like, no, no, no matter. It doesn't matter how many talks or like films that you've watched or pre- preparation. Mm. There's nothing that's going to prepare you for that much disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> the, the and then we time. look at Chad. Um, so did your parents ever tell you about it? Birds uh, and the bees. Uh, my dad actually walked in the room when I was watching porno, and he's like, "Oh, okay." Just make sure to wear a condom. And he walked back on. <laughs> Why are you masturbating? <laughs> no, no. I wasn't masturbating yet. I was trying to find a good seat. I like um, your I like your dad. He just looked down and he goes, Okay, what can I uh coach up here? Okay, the, he has it inside her. Um he doesn't have a condom. Uh make sure you use a condom, Chad. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. What about you, um, uh, Clint? Did your parents have to talk with you? Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, it was weird, though. Like, my mom, um, I've never told anybody this story, but she brought me and my my older brother outside. And uh, one of the first Birds and the Bees uh, talks we had was, and I think I was, like, 11 or 12, like, maybe just started jacking off, like, like very, you know, like, very innocent, like, jacking off, like, Kmart brawl ads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and shit like that. And she brought us outside, and she was like, guys, um... There's been people who have been it's okay it's a called erotic asphyxiation and what these kids have been doing <laughs> is that they're choking themselves and kids are dying they're choking themselves out in their closets and they're just kind of hanging themselves and then they masturbate have you boys been doing this and I'm like what the fuck <laughs> that was like one of the first conversations we ever had I'm like wow. I was like no bro like no like so far fetched do- <laughs> I'm gonna do it tonight and your brother's like they have a name for it yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was like, yeah, then I, yeah. Uh, wow, your mom is I just cool. call it choky strokey. <laughs> <laughs> I call it sleeping in the closet. <laughs> but, you know, I don't use, uh, or I, I don't use uh, condoms because I'm Catholic. Every sperm is safe. <laughs> Monty Python reference. I'm Tara Patrick, that is for you. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. So, uh, yeah, for me, my parents... Um, I will go into the news. Um, for me, my parents never um, did any. It was always you learn at school, but then they get upset when school sends a letter saying they're going to teach them. And then, you know, it's like you didn't want to teach me. So why not let people who teach teach? Right? Yeah. Did I say that right? <laughs> I, think I, I hope so. Right. The nurse. Yes. Yeah. It's time for the weekly news with Chad Wago. For the guys with issues. Uh, Rutledge actually just started a new, a brand new research journal. You know how they have like the New England Journal of Medicine and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. They just started one called the, the Journal for Porn Studies. That I, really? Yeah. Okay, go, go on. A couple of the first articles in the uh, initial uh, issue of it are Pornography and Psychology, <laughs> a Reflection. And Gonzo Trannies and Teens, Current Trends in U.S. Adult Content Production, Distribution, and Consumption. And we are speechless. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is a research journal. Yes. You know, you know to be fair, b- before I left UNLV, we had a, there was a porn class that you could take. Porn class? Yeah. You, you would take history of porn. The history of porn? Yeah. Did you take it? No, I was right. It was the year I was leaving. Oh. Oh, I was going to say, that's an easy A. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd be comfortable sitting in a class in the theater while we're watching a porn. That might have been. I would I would have taken it. I mean, if, if it was there when I was there, I would have taken it just to be like, wow, I can have a boner in front in, with, with 300 other classmates. You know what I honest, it's weird this is what watching I honestly, porn with other people, though. We were talking about that earlier. We, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're watching it, kind of like, dude, I like how they shot that, or this dialogue <laughs> is shitty. But like, sexually, it's kind of weird, yeah. unless it's your, like with your girlfriend. But like, no, actually, like I was raised in church, real strict Baptist, mm-hmm. man. So my parents like talk about sex for, for the most part. It was like you're gonna wait till you're married. You're gonna have sex with one person. That's it. You're gonna promise to God stuff like that. But I, I mean, I'm a straight supporter of pornography, man, because it gives you an outlet. Mm-hmm. Of like like this is where you should be lusting, 
You know what I mean? And it's done appropriately, like, like, and she knows, like, either, or the girls that do it, Tara Patrick, like, they know, like, that you're going to be masturbating, you're going to be, mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm, healthy, mm-hmm. man. That's like you're, and it's fantasy, like we talked right, about earlier. Yeah, yeah. It's the fantasy of it, and it's a healthy place for you to get that sexual aggressions out. Yes. It's not like, so, oh, go look at some animals, and then you want to kill them, and then put your penis inside. I don't know where that came from. I, that yeah, came I from a very dark place. Okay, so go ahead, Chad. What you got next? <laughs> uh, speaking of dark places, Galveston. Uh, a sheriff actually just won his sexual harassment lawsuit against his female boss. Uh, the complaint of which alleges things like she forced him to motorboat her. How, how do you force <laughs> a man to motorboat? That's uh, like she saying, got him in a headlock, <clears throat> lifted her shirt up, shoved his head inside her shirt, and then just started inside shaking. her shirt. Yeah. Did, 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 wow. Was she the one who went? <laughs> 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 I have no idea, but based on her build, that wouldn't surprise me. Oh. Her build? She's a husky woman. Uh she looks like a cross between um, who's that cook that used the N word? Paula Dean. Mm, yeah, yeah, she looks like a cross between Paula Dean and Boss Nass from Star Wars Episode <laughs> One. Wow! So kind of like the penguin then, with, with yeah. the white perm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if Paula Dean came up to you and says, "Suck my titties," that's kind of the thing that's going on here. What um, else was she saying? Uh, she also uh, spilled some coke on her crotch and asked him to lick it, lick some of it off of her canookie. Oh. oh, yeah! I might be offended if somebody said Kanucky to me. <laughs> if, if Tara Patrick got her coke and poured it on her crotch and said, "Lick my Kanucky," did I would lick that coke off her asshole? <laughs> I don't care, bro. <laughs> right in front of you, right here in the studio, <laughs> with, with um, your uh, yep, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another one of the uh, greatest hits from this lawsuit. Uh, she knocked a pen off the table. And asked him to pick it up. And then when he picked it up, she said, Well, you're down there. Why don't you have some duck taco? <laughs> <laughs> See, women get the best <laughs> duck taco. <laughs> I think I think, <laughs> I think Clint's leaving. <laughs> oh, I've never heard duck taco. Like, well, this, <laughs> this was the first time I heard it before. Wow. Duck taco. And then she, so she threw the pen down. So she knew she was going to say duck yeah. taco. She said, how do I get him down there? Can you pick up that pen? And while you come up, have some duck taco. Did she open her legs and go? <laughs> Is that the weirdest duck sound? I know. I think it's kind of cool that she was innovative about her harassment. <laughs> yeah. though, like, you know what I mean? Groundbreaking. Not like a dude is like, hey, suck my cock. Yeah, she's, she's colorful, revolutionary. Yes. Also, in news <laughs> that sheriff's friends all now think he's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> like what? She wanted to fuck and you didn't do it. <laughs> this was in Galveston, Texas. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, well, there you go. She's a woman from Texas, and those husky Paula Dean chicks are kind of like that, right? It's mm-hmm. <laughs> a great story. Yes, and that's the weekly news with Chad Wago. For the guys with issues. Duck Taco. Wago fucking news. <laughs> <laughs> Clint's like, what's going on? <laughs> what? What? Is Chad having a seizure? <laughs> Was Chad having a seizure? What's happening? You know, I didn't want to mention before we, we, we cut off that I am now a fan. I guess this is kind of news. I am now a fan of Hawaii's women beach volleyball team. Yeah. I had no idea we had this. Oh, yeah, they what? started it what three years ago? Was it three years? Ago? I I didn't know like until Twitter. Three years ago, I saw on Twitter a picture of a really hot ass, mm-hmm. and it's a very tall woman. Uh, she's she's actually she played for Stanford for four years, and then now she's playing for Hawaii. Um, she plays uh, regular not not sand beach volleyball not indoor. beach volleyball indoor yes for four years, and now she's playing for Hawaii's beach volleyball team. Mm-hmm. And holy and then they. Sh- I saw it on Twitter. Then I, you know, what do you call it? Um, stalking. <laughs> then I stalked the pages. Research. Yes, or <laughs> trolled or whatever. It's research. Or, Detective work. Yeah, and then I saw all. They're hot. The, you guys got to check it out. Dude, These girls are hot. I mean, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Most college volleyball players are all amazing. No, no. This, I, I, I agree. I yeah. agree. Uh, I dated one when I was in, in Buffalo and our team. but And you took one to prom. Yes, I did. Um, but very nice. This the beach team makes the indoor team look ugly. The beach team, 
oh my god i guess because they're on the sun they get the tan they get that glowing mm-hmm. bronze you know for the white girls they get that glowing bronze tan Ch- find them i don't like white I girls yeah well, i love white <laughs> girls um <laughs> Uh, check that. Go look for the Hawaii's um, uh, beach vo- Hawaii women's, of course, the women's beach volleyball team. I think they should be televised on TV like they do the indoor. I would be such a huge fan. I am huge, and I'll be a fan. The Wahini. Yeah. So check it out. Uh, it's time for Uncle Russell's useless trivia. Now it's time for <laughs> trivia. We are going to listen to Uncle Russell. <laughs> Has no, I would not turn my chair around on the voice. I'm going to let you guys know that right now. Do you sing that every time? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it, it gets newer and worser every week. Yeah, he does a different song that he makes up. It's, it's was, not even songs. Cool, it's, it's, just, a, it's, just cool. it's not even melodies. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Russell, you need to find a button for that one. <laughs> 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 Push the button. Okay, what you, what kind of uh, useless information you got for us, Russell? Today I'm going to talk about a uh, about measurements and a uh, oh, measurements. In, the, in the medieval French and Italian time, a unit of measurement. Well, there was one called the butt. The like this is saying, <clears throat> what size are your shoes? Oh, it's the butt. No, it's like two butts. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, I've had a buttload of wine. <laughs> Oh, so but that's actually oh, an so amount. A was a volume. It's a, yeah, it's a, use, it's a use of measurement. Yeah, unit of measurement. Wow, half a ton, dude. They say. Wow, half a ton. Yeah, I. Don't, that's a big ass butt. Yeah, I was just about to say. I don't know if you can put that much in a butt. <laughs> no, I guess you can. You can put a buttload of wine. That's like uh, Mama June from uh, uh, Honey Boo Boo's size butt of wine. <laughs> that that that's a boo boo butt. <laughs> Dude, I wanted, I wanted to know uh, Tara Patrick's measurements. I think she's mostly uh, top heavy. Yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty thin. I'm, I'm sure that you can look that up online. <laughs> <I'm trying>. TaraPatrick.com. <laughs> mm-hmm. Boo yeah, boo. Yeah. And that was Uncle Russell's useless trivia. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. He's like, yeah, it was. <laughs> ain't singing this shit again. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you crazy? <clears throat> I, um, seriously though, folks. I know we joked all around a lot and. We made fun of a lot of uh, things, and we might have been a little offensive. On a serious note, um, if you guys see a teenager or somebody who's being bullied, we need to put, put a stop to bullying. Please uh, become a friend to someone, even just saying hello. Yep. How are you? Yep. That's simple, and that's how it starts. You never know. You might meet your soulmate or your best friend, or you might save somebody's life. Because when our kids, and they are our kids, if you're an adult, you have kids, and that's the younger generation. And if we have another one commit suicide because of stupid, because they're different, and somebody's bullying them, we need to put a stop to that because that's bullshit. So become a friend. This is so weird that we do it at the end of a Guys With Issues uh, show, but that's... No, it's an issue. Yeah, yeah. we care. Yeah. Dude, we yeah. Care. And I don't know. I've I've saw on your like your your Facebook uh, feed and your posts and stuff like that that you you're you're for real about it. Like yeah. you feel strongly about bullying. I think it's cool, man. Yeah, I yeah, was a, I was a bully myself. Um, of course, I was bullied too when I was younger. But you know, it's, some people think it's it's just something you do when you grow up. You go through that, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, yeah, definitely from the heart. And I'm sure I speak for all of us when we say let's. Let's uh, work together and put a stop to our kids getting bullied. Yeah, knock that shit off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did she knock that shit out? Off. No, knock that shit off. Oh, I was going to say, Chad turning into a bully all of a sudden. Hey, uh, okay, um, go tonight or tomorrow night and see Tara Patrick at Club 939. Hawaii's premier gentleman's club. At 939 KL Moku Street, uh, 9 o'clock. She has two shows, two performances uh, you're gonna see her. We're, you're gonna stop by tomorrow. We're gonna have fun with her. Uh, she likes cola. She was drinking one today uh, that um, Clint shared with her. Um, mm-hmm. So check her out. But tonight here at um, Mars Comedy Club, we have the Bye Bye Clint show. Come down tonight. It's only five dollars to get in. You, you can't even watch. You can't even watch Frozen for five dollars. But you can come here, Mars Comedy Club. You get to see I'm hosting. We got Shane Lucas Price. We got Chad Wago. We got Anthony Negrelli. It's gonna be off the hook, as the urban kids say. It's gonna be a great time. Uh, come down, say hello, say hi to Chad. He'll be at the door. 
Uh, it's at, I forget the address, but it's inside Hawaiian Brines. Okay, so come down. We'll have a good time. Also, go to MarsComedy.com. Um, check out our, our, our posts. Go to the fan page, Guys With Issues. Uh, search it on Facebook or even on Google. It'll lead you to the Guys With Issues fan page. Like the fan page. We need more. Share the podcast with somebody. Tell one person. Have them tell somebody. That way we get famous and we get to talk about you on our show. We'd like to thank our special guest, Tara Patrick, who is here. Uh, thank our, our super special guest, because Tara left already. <laughs> so he's a super special guest, Clint Boltzley. Dude, hey, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. A lot of fun, man. It was cool. So we'll see you guys on the next episode. Once again, my name is James Mane. As always, I'm with Russell Kealoha. Goodbye, bitches. And the supposed comedian, Chad Wago. Thanks for listening to the podcast. God bless you and good night.